everybody. This is fantastic. I am here in Dallas with Pastor Joe and Nancy Martin. We're in their brand new studio. And in fact, this is the first recording. This is the inaugural, <laughs> the inaugural <laughs> the recording. Well, what, a, what an honor. What a privilege to, to be here with yeah. this very fine couple who are leading such a brilliant church. Welcome, Joe. Thank you, Pastor. And so uh, Nancy. You. Thank you, Pastor Phil. Yeah. Well, uh, this, this podcast is uh, talking about all things church and leadership. And uh, you guys have now been in the ministry leading churches for nearly 50 years. Nearly 40. Nearly 40. Yeah. Can you believe it? Yep. This is our this is our thirtieth year. Yeah. Amen. I think that's awesome. Yes. I think I think we need more people to be able to hang on in there. I know that longevity. And how long have you been married? Thirty eight years. Just this, kind of similar. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. 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 Right away. We got married and went right, right into the, the ministry. Bat. So tell us how you got married. How, how'd you meet? We met at a Christmas party back in nineteen eighty four. So I saw Nancy cross the room, and the Lord spoke to me about her. True story, yeah. He spoke to me about her. Said he, he said, "Can I tell the story?" Well, yes, I think that you she's do a good been job. she's been hurt in a relationship, but tell her I'm going to heal her heart, yeah. and I'm going to use her for the kingdom. And so I thought to myself, she she had on skin tight leather pants. <laughs> I just frosted my hair. Just frosted her hair. <laughs> And yeah. she, she had on a little thin white sweater. Oh, it's okay. Then. And her hair up in a pebbles and bam, bam. Splashing And I everywhere. thought, there's no way I'm going to say anything to this girl. And I was just sipping on some champagne. Yeah. yeah. But later that evening, Looking good. she and I had a chance to speak. And and she was so tenderhearted towards the Lord. I, we prayed together that night. She came to Christ. Wow. And, uh, yeah. I was going later, through an annulment. Right yeah. at the specific part. Right, and Pastor Joe saw me, and he said, "The Lord sees your heart, knows you're going through a very painful relationship, but He, His heart is to use you mightily for the kingdom of God and have hope." Wow, how powerful is that? I mean, yeah. so fact, powerful. <laughs> yeah, the fact that you like believed that God was speaking to you. Yes. Totally. That word of knowledge is so powerful. Yes. Yeah. So powerful. And this was kind of the, the gentleman that I'd married about six months into it. He said, I have to let you go, Nancy, because God and children mean so much to you. And I'm not there yet. Wow. Uh-huh. So, it's, so it's that's difficult. what where the hurt was. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, you your background is, is, is kind of uh, quite quite uh, colorful. Uh, <laughs> you, you come from uh, a family that was involved family, in Catholic clothing, family right? from North Dakota. Yeah. We're Icelandic. So when Pastor Joe and I would have a vigorous argument, he said it's because he was married to a strong Viking. A Viking. I agreed. <laughs> yes. So tell us about the clothing industry. In yeah. The so um, I, uh, my, both my parents were in the clothing industry, so I modeled quite a bit. I was a cheerleader. Um, look back, I mean, there were such good things, but it was a little bit of a blur. We moved from North Dakota to Dallas when I was about 10 or 11. It took our family a while to adjust, but I sure, I love the clothing industry. <laughs> I still do, and I just, um, I feel like Pesto let me maintain being myself with the journey of being a pastor's wife and loving God and loving people. It's been a joy. I'm yeah. able to keep my fancy flair. <laughs> yeah. So Joe, you come you you have a totally different background. Yes. The farm. Yeah, the Green farm. Acres. The farm. <laughs> yes. I I grew up on a little farm in western Tennessee. And in fact, the whole uh Hickory Valley. The whole county only had 27,000 people in it. Huh. He was king of the county. Okay. I got uh-huh. it. Yeah. But uh but you know, when I graduated from high school, went to College in Mississippi, and then I moved to Dallas immediately following that. Amazing. Yeah. And then you got involved in what, the oil industry? Yes. When I got here, I got a job in the oil and gas industry, and uh, within a couple of years, I was drilling wells and raising money and putting together deals. And so it was a really uh, growing time in the industry back in the, in the early 1980s. Amazing. And what brought you to Dallas? 
That's yeah, really, yeah, he's uh, yeah. I, I'd never been to Dallas before. I never had thought about Dallas. In fact, I had dreamed of having a career in politics, huh. and uh, so I was headed to law school in Tennessee at Vanderbilt. And uh, two weeks before I graduated from college, uh, my girlfriend, uh, ex-girlfriend, we stopped, we had to quit dating. Uh, she informed me that she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, at that time, it was illegal to get an abortion in Tennessee or Mississippi or Arkansas. Right. So she said, I'm going to Dallas. Huh. And that's the first I'd ever thought about yeah. coming to Dallas. I never right. had thought about Amazing. Dallas at all. Mm. But that's, that's what got me here. And, uh, in fact, it played a big part two years later in my salvation. It, well, it t- tell us about that. It did. Well, I, I, I had come to Christ about 18 months uh, after I'd got to Dallas and yeah, I had one of those conversions that, you know, I, it was a 180 degree turn for mm. me. And, uh, and so, so I was, you know, pursuing the Lord and, uh, and, uh, I, I'd visited a charismatic church. I'd never heard of that before. Never seen that before. Church on the Rock? Yeah. Church on the Larry Rock. Lee. Larry Lee. Uh-huh. And it was in one of those services that Larry Lee called me out of the crowd and spoke over me, prophesied over me. Amazing. Yeah. A key over the city of Dallas. Wow. So it really got me thinking about the things of the Spirit, pursuing the things of the Spirit. So so when I got Spirit baptized, uh, it was a life changer for me. Right. And, um, and so, uh, it was, it was a big part of my development of right. course. and just, it really just changed the whole tide of where I was headed. And right. the people yeah. that you started to spend time with. Yeah. So you, you started the prayer meeting, right? My business partner and I, Pastor Terry Moore now, uh, he and I started, he actually, he'd started it and I joined him. Right. A, a Bible study in his home. Huh. And so when we first started, there were six or eight of us. And then by a year and a half later, there were 150 people. Wow. It grew to fast. His home. Were you part of that, Nancy? I, uh, well, yeah, it's toward the, what, a year or two into toward it. Toward the end of right. it. Right. Yeah. And I've got a great story with that. Right. So I grew up Catholic, right? And so I go with Pastor Joe to this Bible study. Cause I just really was crazy about him. <laughs> and so during worship, I heard Ezekiel 37, but I didn't even know it was in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And this woman walks over. She taps me on the shoulder. She said, I believe you're looking for Ezekiel 37. So she read over it with me. And I tell you, that's just been a significant chapter. Ah, going to cry in my life. You know, not only to speak to the dry bones in my life and the world around me, but for all of us to just encourage people, we got to speak life to the dry bones that they will live. Isn't that neat? Yeah, like yeah. I love first that. thing that I heard, really, yeah. in the very beginning days. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be <laughs> one of the most powerful <laughs> yeah. chapters in the entire I know, I love scripture. It. Yeah, I, too. You bring it up a lot. Oh, yeah, I, I love that, yeah. that yeah. passage. So that notes. became the beginning of this church. Right. And so okay. after about two years of this Bible study growing, people began to say that was their church. Right. And of course, we were business guys. Nobody had been to seminary. Nobody the piano done with a finger. Like, we, so yeah, had, we had a guy play the piano, and we would sing a few songs. We'd read from the Bible, and then we'd pray for people. Yeah, and, and it just grew. It went grew, till midnight. Grew. Yeah. Oh, it was just crazy. Deliverance and inner healing. Yeah. yeah. And so then we we started a church, and it quickly went to a thousand people. Huh. And uh, and so Nancy oh. and I began at the very ground level. She, in fact, Nancy was the first janitor of the church. <laughs> I was six yeah, and a yeah. half years. Way to go! And I, I was the assistant janitor. <laughs> and then we, we did it. We did it. Then we went all the way up to where we were. I was a senior associate. There. So good. And then you traveled the world. Yeah. And so good. That was significant for us because for a while we were part of a movement called Every Nation. Yes. All right, 10 years, we were on the apostolic team there. Right. But we think that that just started our heart beating for the global church. We always wanted to be a part of a global movement. Right, right. And so there was a shift in every nation. And so for a while, we were looking, and we found you. Yeah, and C3. Pastor well, Chris read uh, Dr. Seuss, so the places you'll go. Yeah. I the... cried and cried. I said, <laughs> we found our people. Oh, nice. So, thanks for letting yeah, us be well, a part. We, we love having you 
on board. It's like Thank we've you. found our people too, you know. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so the journey is 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 made incredible because of the people you, you well, journey with. You know, our first meeting with you all, the, the women prayed, the men prayed, the women knew the word, the relationships were strong. Mm-hmm. And we came back, I could hardly communicate to our team the joy um, and for a while, I just said, whatever happens, Joe, I love those people, and I'll just go, <laughs> I'll go hang out with them, you know. So it took us a while for uh, those around us to yeah. really stand with us yeah. and say yes and let us be a part of C3, but we love it. We're going to keep taking our teams as often as we right. can so they can just pick up, but I think it's such a healthy, yeah. good, strong yeah. movement for the men and the women and the generations. Exactly. You know, Bible college. Exactly. I love, I love so much. Exactly. Thank and uh, yeah, I mean, in an, in a day like today where we've got so many new young ministers, I mean, in this next 12 months, we're starting around about 45 new churches. That's incredible. And most of them are going to be young guys <laughs> and gals. Yes. And, uh, and so, th- not that you're yeah. old, but we need more mature well, yeah. people yeah. around the yeah. place who are loving these new young guys and, as well and, to support them and strengthen them. We can bring them. our experience and our encouragement. Thank you. And, yeah, I think yeah. we can come beside them and, and bring some stability and yep. some encouragement. And You're doing that now yeah. already. Yeah, I mean, we, we love doing Pastor that. Joe's and it's a flying joy. in. You can do it. Exactly. Yeah. It's a joy. And I think the thing, there's so many things that I love about our movement at C3, but the I think the, the thing that I love the most is the discipleship element of the next generation Mm -hmm. how incredibly the older i get the more important that becomes and how incredibly important that is and how that is so universally embraced right and not just with words i mean we got right. great churches making disciples, yeah. training leaders, changing the world. Exactly. We love so, that. so give me, uh, like, I'm so with you on that. I think there's there couldn't be a more important topic to lay a foundation yeah, for something. for ministers. Yeah. I mean, the ministry is not the good foundation right. for ministry. Right. Discipleship. Amen. Is the, yeah, is, the right. is the foundation. To We're, withstand everything, right? To withstand yeah. everything, yeah. exactly. And so uh, give us one main, one main point about what discipleship is for you, Pastor Joe. I've always said this, and, and this, I think this is maybe more out of my practice than, than theory, but, but I think it's coming alongside someone, befriending them, right. and then doing life with them. Right. To me, that's that's the foundation yeah. of desi- is our friendships. Yeah, our, we care about it. We like each other. We like doing life together. We right. we we can encourage one another just through li- not th- some class. Right. Although I, there's nothing wrong with classes, mm-hmm. but it's the doing of life together. There you go. That's so uh, important. I yeah. think. And that's that's pretty much it. Do life together. Yeah. Eat together. That's right. Laugh together. And it's good for our children to see us doing that, mm-hmm. you know, like we're including more and more of our young, uh, younger ones to come to Vision Builders and all the events that we have so they can watch us doing that, the joy that it brings, the relationships. And Pastor Joe and I would also include, I mean, we love so many couples already, C3 around the world, but some have flown in even when we were going through difficult times. We stood in our kitchen mm-hmm. They spoke such life to our dry bones. You know, some people had moved on or spoken some things. So I think it's true, you know, for the children, your children's children, but then also just seeing each other through life's journey, illnesses, things like that. We really do pray and love one another. And I think that's part of it, too. It is. Okay, so family life and the ministry, uh, you guys have done (laughs) exceptionally well (laughs) in this area. Thank With all your kids, it, it's the grace of God, <laughs> Pastor. He's and you know this, and I'm fancy. Yeah, so, so for a lot of pastors and 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 their wives and their families, it, it there's pressure. I yeah. mean, uh, we've seen over the last few years marriages break, mm-hmm. uh, families fall apart in in 
under the pressure yeah. of, of ministry. And it's so important that we keep addressing this area so that we can walk the entire journey together and finish strong. That's right. So come on, Nancy, give us some parenting well, tips. I'm super grateful because I really haven't had to live a hidden life where I'm one way in the church, one way at home. I think Pastor Joe did a beautiful job with myself and our kids and even our grandkids is being vulnerable and real. I am so grateful. We almost joined a movement where you really, really had to be um, exceptional and proper and do things right. Well, I still don't do those <laughs> things. You know, I just don't fall uh, inside the book, the outline right. and all that. But Pastor Joe just let us be. Now, sometimes I would share way too much. He didn't want me to get home and we'd have to work through it. But I said, Joe, I just needed that help. And so thank you for letting me open up. But we are still in it. And I tell our staff and everyone, we still love what we're doing. We love right. God. We love you. And I think that happens. People get French fried or burned out yeah. and they have these hidden lives. And that is a tragedy it is. to it me. Is. And it so, is. you is. know, we have a lot of close people that we would yeah. call you. Yeah. I mean, we want to finish strong yeah. and we want to exactly. hear well done. Our, our faithful servants, and I think you got to be careful <laughs> and, you know, and be uh, genuine. Well, if you got good people around you, that can be your salvation. Yes. That's right. Uh, when guys get isolated and they're doing it on their own, yeah. you can get away with a lot when yeah. nobody's near you. Yeah. But when you got close relationships, people know stuff and they can see stuff, and that on its own is going to provide for you boundaries. And it that, saves uh, your children and grandchildren. Yeah. So one of the things I would encourage people is Pastor Joe hoped that we would have a building with 10,000 people and he would write books and go around the world. We do get to go around the world, but we just look at what our life and what God's done and God knew the best what to do to keep our marriage right. strong. We're still going. Our, our children aren't bitter. Our grandchildren right. want to get Baptized, are getting baptized this weekend. And so, yeah, I think so, those steps okay. are important. So you, you said, like, you share a little bit much, and then you go home and have a conversation. Yeah. Uh, okay, so talk, talk, let's talk about a that. A big risk Yeah, yeah, no, no, I want to I I hear. And so, Joe, how's that go? Well, I, 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 you know, Nancy's a verbal processor, so she's constantly verbalizing her thoughts and, and her uh, feelings. And it, I, I'm I'm an internal processor, and so what what I found is it, if if we don't talk beforehand, it's going to come out in the meeting, right? <laughs> right. So we got to maintain a discussion right. at, at the home level to make sure that it doesn't all come out and yeah. spill out before the whole church. Tell them about that yeah. that marriage retreat we went to. Yeah. They sent us on a marriage retreat. You, know, you tell them. Well, it was very expensive. It was wonderful. And we're walking in to get help. And Joe said, Nancy, Nancy, now you got to help me. You got to tell these people how I feel. I said, that's exactly why we're here. <laughs> and while we have trouble, you've got to be able to let it out, Joe. And I mean, I, I cried through it. A couple sessions, but then Pastor Joe just, he let it out. And I said, it's so important. I need to know because he'll pack it, pack it away, but it'll come out sometimes. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's personalities or if it's just male and, <laughs> male and female. Hey, I mean, both, men, yeah. men well, tend to, we, we live in, in caves, you yeah. know, like we, we withdraw yeah. to process, like you say. And uh, He has a man cave at our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. it, it does. It says, what does it say? Uh, it, anyway, he man has cave. Yeah, yeah, man yeah, cave. Yeah. Place to withdraw. No girls yeah. allowed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, men have a big nothing space in their that's head. Right. Nancy. Okay. And so we go there, you know, okay. and and uh, we're just staring mm, off into yeah. uh, space, and our wives say, "What are you thinking about?" And you, yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing. nothing. I'm in my nothing space. <laughs> yeah. And, and anyway, you know, that's that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> how you know, men and women get to God relate designed to one another. it that way. But I I am I interested because I know that uh, many marriages just live with a simmering. Tense. situation yeah. that they actually do not have the conversation about. Yeah. So when you do go home and there is the need for do you like 
instead of waiting until we just blow, mm. it's better to get it get it that's get right. to it before it gets to you. That's right. And that's a learned behavior. Right. Right? Because I think as men, we are hard charging. Yeah. We're moving forward. We we we're, we're we're bringing people with us. We're bringing right. And I think, you know, if if we if we don't practice the Sabbath, right. and taking time aside from being a hard charger, Mm-hmm. Then we're inevitably asking for marriage and relationship problems, yeah. children problems. Yeah. So we, you have to take that time, yeah. and and it's a learned it's a learned uh, behavior for those of us who Still who learning. are, are heart you know, oh, go yeah. go go. It and when you get the pressure of children, yeah, and the pressure of a mortgage. That's right. And two jobs often disappointment. Three, that's and, right. Yeah. And then. You throw those people into the mix of running a church. That's right. Uh, with a lot of people who are feeling like they need attention, or that there's all. What about me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so for marriages in the ministry, my my lord, the the, the strength and grace from God yeah. that is needed. And so I've said, like at all of our conferences, I want one session on marriages, Good. so that we keep. Inputting into helping people, at least getting slightly better, you know, just yeah. a, a bit better in in Thank their marriages. And I mean, we're not looking for p- perfection yeah. right. in marriages, but we are looking yeah. for them to manage the difficult yeah. seasons and yeah. just to understand that it can get pretty ordinary sometimes. Yes, in our relationship, Pastor Joe would do he'd do an outline and he'd go, "Here, Nancy, is all we got to do. It's just right there on that piece of paper." Well, I would bring that paper to him later. I'd be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now we got to get the words off that paper into our life. Yeah. And, but it's great. We actually um, are celebrating our differences better and not tolerating yeah. them. And I think our kids and people around us can see that. Right. So we just took a two-week vacation, just the two of us, and people are just stunned. They're, what in the world did you do together, just the two of you? <laughs> we had the sweetest moments. Yeah. Just, uh, this is what I love about you. This is what I said, now, can you say that again? Uh, <laughs> I hope I did the same to him, but it was a wonderful yeah. time of just being together. Yeah. yeah. And it, and it is interesting, isn't it, that if you travel through the tough days, there are days on the other side yes. that are so that are rich sweet. Yes. and deep so sweet. that you cannot have unless you'd actually traveled been, through. Been through the hard times. The tough times. That's right. And so just because it, there's a bit of pain, I don't think we should drop out. Now, right. I want to I trip into uh, another another area, which is to do with church life. and. Yeah. And I just want to congratulate you guys on having such a magnificent family. And I mean, of all your legacy Thank that you, you will leave, that is your. your Pastor, gonna... could I say some, just one little thing? Mm-hmm. About yeah, that? go ahead. And I, I think I, I try to tell this to young pastors. And first of all, just as you said, life has seasons, mm-hmm. and the most difficult season is when you're trying to build a business, build a church, mm-hmm. build a life, and you got little kids at home, mm-hmm. and it, it, that's a hard season. Mm-hmm. And but he, here's here's the good news is it's going to change. Right. It's going to get better. <laughs> right. It is. Right. And and so one of the things that we it's did over. and we decided early on is that you know we were not going to make our children make them conform to right. church life. Right. We wanted them. They were you know they were going to come to church with us. But if they had a ball game or a soccer match right. or something on Sunday morning, Nancy would take them. Yes. I would, and we, we had no apology about that. Yeah. We wanted them to see they could sure. have a normal life yeah. and, and still be committed to Christ. Nice. Sometimes um, when they were little, I just believe so much in the father and the family if, mm-hmm. if, we, if, you, if he's there. But I would call Pastor Joe, I'd say, they need you. And he's, well, and let me finish this, 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 and I'd go, they need you. They need right. your life. 
They right. need your arms. They need your wisdom. Right. And I loved it. I love, and I and I was okay with that. You hmm. know, we're, we're gifted different anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. I verbal process them to death. Yeah. So, but anyway, I think just man, I'd say to young couples, you know, find your strengths and their, you know, and your weaknesses and mesh Beautiful. that together. Bring that together. You yeah. Know, for the Holy Spirit, and then I love it. You know how the mom sort of represents that in the yeah. home. But then the father, yeah. Yeah, God's we meant love. to our differences should complement yeah. one right. another rather than compete with one another. Yeah. yeah. That Look, takes a while. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Talking about church, uh, you've built a beautiful church here in Dallas and now you've just opened this second location with a beautiful mid century design building that uh, we're opening. Like today. Tonight. Yeah, which is. And by the way, thank you for being here, for doing that for us. <laughs> it's, it just means the world to us. It's yeah. remarkable that you're here. Thank well, you. It's thank you. My Pastor honor, Phil. honestly. Uh, to, I'm, the thing is, over the past few years, I have, uh, like in the early days, we were pushing for churches of thousands all the time. Mm-hmm. Let's get. And yet, uh, recently, I think the need for people to become emotionally bonded, which Paul calls joined, Mm -hmm. joined and knitted with one another, has become so much more important because there's so many isolated, lonely people. And I've found that it is increasingly difficult in very large churches for people to discover that. That's right. And so in churches of like anything, you know, around 200, 500 people, People find it a lot more um, accessible Mm -hmm. to meet one another and to actually not just be friendly, which our church often got the compliment, you got such a friendly church. And I'd tell our staff meeting, well, it's meant to be a compliment, but I'm not into it, to tell you the truth. I like being a friendly church. That's good. But to make friends Mm -hmm. is a totally different deal. They eat at your table. And they're with you in your pain and in your celebrations. That's right. So yeah. making friends in church, and and I, I mean, you asked, what does the f- church of the future look like? That's where I would see that the sense of community is deeper, stronger, richer, and fuller for people. That, so that we are not yeah. just talking about a vertical relationship with God, but which isn't a big deal in the New Testament. To tell you the truth, it is in David's life, uh, but. Most of the New Testament is devoted to the horizontal, mm-hmm. how you're getting along with one another. That's right. And how you're treating one another. Mm-hmm. And so I think as we move into the future that the world of relationships and yeah. friendships and fellowship are going to become uber important. Mm-hmm. And so churches that are structured, even the architecture mm-hmm. that is built towards that, is important. And uh, one, one of the things that when we were building our building, we sat down, we, we had like maybe 10 different buildings on our campus. And I was working with a, a guy and he, who, who had a real heart for what we were doing. He was, a, he was a member of our church. He's an engineer, not an architect. But he said, look, bring the roof down so that people aren't intimidated by the building, oh. so that it's human size. Mm. And then he said, make all the doors spill into the main courtyard. Mm -hmm. Don't have them off in different places so that when people come out of one building, they meet people coming out of another. So I thought that that was such a good piece of advice Mm -hmm. to keep the sense of people meeting. Because it's not just meeting once. It's the continual Mm -hmm. facilitating of community in our churches that, I think is going to be super important. You just touched on that because I was telling Pastor Phil, I love his YouTube short videos. I love them. But you were talking about Paul yeah. and having relationships. And you know how there are times where we're fearful or we're right. overwhelmed. And then God brings these relationships, you yes. know, to keep us, you know, going. And so I can, I, you feel that it, it can help to, you know, people getting to know one another right. and their children. And, right. you know, it, it is. It is good, the oh, environment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I think, you know, the word you said at the end is really the key word is community. And I think that's one of the deepest needs that people have today, yeah. whether they are new or transient into the neighborhood, the area, or they've been around a while. They, they, they need a 
community. You can't get that on a computer screen. Right. You can't get that through a Zoom call. No. And and so it's the, it's the it's the skin to skin touch. It's yeah. the hand to hand handshake. The mm-hmm. look in the eye. Mm-hmm. The welcoming. The the hey, come be with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so important. And and I think a smaller venue, uh, two to five hundred people creates an atmosphere where you can come in, you always see someone you know, right. but there's always new people that right. you don't know. Right. So there's an excitement about rather than an ingrownness. Yeah. And all over this community there are, you know, there are churches that have aged out and that are waiting for some of these young people we're going to raise up to take those venues and mm-hmm. revitalize the community. Right. It's going to change. It doesn't just change the church. It changes the whole community. Yeah. When we came to this location right. and spent the money that we spent, the investment that we made in this community, it's changed the whole community. Oh, really? Uh, and it yeah. was in. And so, you know, we we want to create a facility that that makes it possible for people to easily connect totally yeah totally and and yeah. to ease be, of connection is is it. huge and it's not just the architecture though it's the culture it's the look and feel of the entire place and that's where um some models of churches that have gained prominence uh, are what i would say have been built from the stage mm-hmm. yeah. but but as we move into the future i think Built We've got to build, build it from the pew. That's right. Yeah. And and unleash the power of the entire congregation, yeah. Yeah. allowing them to rise up. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. That's why I think we can be an encouragement to these church plants. Mm-hmm. You know, don't despise, you know, the, the days of new beginnings, right? Right. And just like our testimony, when God is the author of it, you know, right. we look up and what God has done, it's been the best thing for us So right. trusting him, right. you know? And I also think that we need to lift the stigma, if there is one, off the idea of small churches. Mm. Yes. I mean, in yes. whatever a small church is, I think they should be celebrated yeah. because there's community there. And they are loving one another, as long as it's not inbred and just going right. backwards, and it's not small because it's de- declining under a really unhealthy uh, environment and situation. But if it is small, uh, there's nothing wrong with a well-run, healthy, contained, so-called small church. Maybe 100, 120 people. That's right. But it's beautiful. That's right. Because they're they're bonding, they're reaching out. They may not be able to gather together the level of resources that large churches can, but at least they got people resources. That's right. Our you know, not just money resources. Yeah, needs to change. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah and so I've become a champion of lately of of a lot of these pastors who have been faithful with their 120. Yes. Yes, sir. And uh, they're still there. Week after week. Well, there's so many advantages Amen. a small church has over a mega church. Mm-hmm. And one of the primary things, it, it can be much more efficient and effective per person. Right. Than more people save, more right. people bat percentage wise. Right. And and so because that is the you know, the 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 relational aspect. Of yeah. The, the, is that more leaders? Yeah. yeah I mean, so. Well, I, I, opportunity. I, you know, I definitely do believe we need large churches. Though. Yes. And, and I just think, but we don't need them at the expense of uh, or in mockery of the smaller guys. That's right. As though they have failed, as though they haven't really, you know, ponied up for the for the big for the big church idea. And but I do think we need flagship churches everywhere. Yes. We need the Jerusalems, the Antiochs, yes. the large apostolic churches that are setting the pace, setting the And the, the resources. Yeah. And, and the resources. a lot from that. But I think if if there can yeah. be a, an equal respect and encouragement Amen. Uh, for all those faithful pastors and who, who've got a church and, and they shouldn't feel discouraged. I know they often get, oh man, nothing's happening. We aren't going anywhere. And so I would, I would like to send out a message to all of our colleagues in the ministry. And some of you might be, have been faithful with 120 people for 50 years, you know, so God bless you for being faithful with, yes. with what God has given you. Certainly don't feel discouraged. Feel encouraged that... Uh, Even when we got our first building, we were so small. But the people that helped us buy our building, 
the first ones to give were our children. Right. It was so awesome. They came with their baggage. Right. They busted open their bank, you know, their little piggy bank. Paso Joe is all the money you need to get that building. <laughs> you know, they're just opportunities. Sensational. That, my goodness, everybody can be involved. Yes. And then it changes them forever. It does. Nothing it can does. ever take that it away does. from them. Yeah. Well, it's been delightful, <laughs> Pastor Joe, Nancy, and it's so good getting to know you more and more as, as the years pass by, and uh, you've been so helpful, encouraging uh, for a lot of our younger ministers around the movement, and believe me, you, you don't know the impact you are having just on a very passive level without actually even being involved. You are looked to and respected and honored by so many of our younger guys around the movement, so thank you for being that uh, leading light for us in Jesus' name. Pastor Phil, thank, thank you. you. We we yeah. want to honor Life you giving. and so grateful for really your faithfulness to God, your faithfulness to your wife and family, your, you know, just dogged uh, attitude that you, you know, you're going to finish the race strong. It's mm-hmm. been, it's been uh, uh, an, a motivation and an encouragement for me personally and for us. And you have Thank such you. joy in the journey. I, I yeah. pick up on that and yeah. still smile. <laughs> you yeah. just, you know, you encourage Well, I just it. look at you, Nancy. <laughs> I've never seen you without a smile. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> yeah. That's it. And the laugh of uh, Jesus. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Well, thanks Phil. very much. Yeah. God bless you. We, we love our C3 family. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah.